you lot, welcome back to the channel. Today we've got an absolute honking video ahead of us. We're here with my G-Wagon, ahead of filming with a Lexus LFA, no less. I drive it, there's POV, there's all sorts. It's a really exciting video and a car that I wanted to get in for many years. And I nearly bought back with my Carrera GT. More on that. But before we kick off, I'm gonna show you something that I'm gonna install in my Brabus a G500 4x4 squared. So let's head in and I'll show you. So here inside the car then, I've got the 70 My A810. This is a brand, new product that's only just released. It's 4K, as you can see, it's HDR as well. This is their brand new product. It's literally just come out by the point at which this video goes live. 70 Mai is the first Sony Starvis 2 4K 4G dash cam. As you can see, you've got the hardwire kit there as well. It's 4G, 4K, it's all going on, and HDR clarity as well. So let's get her unboxed then. In here, we have the camera itself, which allows you to display crystal clear day and night footage in original resolution, recorded by both A810 in 4K and RC12 in 1080p HDR. And you see some comparisons on the screen there. So I'll chuck it in and we'll see it in action. Stick right there, nice and easy. And then we peel off this film on here, lovely stuff. And that is your screen. Okay, so now we are wired up. The wire goes the whole way around there down the trim, inside, along the front there, behind the screen, all the way up, and then into your USB slot there. And the red one, chuck that in, power up the car, take that, and she was into life. Look at that. Select English there, lovely stuff. And here we go. And obviously you do exactly the same at the back as well. Oh, Ariana Grande's new album, Guilty. So now you're set up, you can actually benefit from some of the smart parking guardian mode features with advanced AI motion detection algorithm. So even if the car's on your drive, you've basically got a security camera in your car keeping an eye on what's going on. And of course, if you're parking out and about, you can keep an eye on what's going on. You've also got 4G connectivity functions like app live streaming. So you can actually check live footage remotely through your phone and view what's going on in front of your car, take photos or record videos all at your fingertips. You've also got find my car and real time route tracking so you can locate and recover your vehicle in a crowded parking lot. And you can track real time driving remotely, stay informed of your car's exact location when someone else is driving it. And you've got instant app alerts as well. When your car's parked, whenever a collision or suspicious incident happens, it pushes instant notifications to your phone. Anyway, from myself and the 70 My camera up here, I will leave an exclusive link below to go and check out and check out all of the features because I've only touched on some of them here and check out how to buy and all the pricing details. Leave that link in the pinned comment below. But for now, I'm gonna get going in this monstrosity and head down to Octane Collection and jump in the LFA, so let's go. Right then, dash cam talk aside, let's, oh, there we go. Dash cam talk aside then, you join me now back at Octane Collection, one of my favorite places, car related places in the UK. Great bunch, super, super friendly. Come say hello anyway, they're fantastic. So today we are not only taking a look around, we are going to go and see a car, which I've alluded to already, a Lexus LFA. A Lexus LFA is a car that I've wanted forever and I nearly bought, back when I bought my Crow GT, the guy that sold me my Crow GT had an LFA as well, which I tried to buy at the same time. And unfortunately for me, I was far too poor to do that. I couldn't get the funding signed off on both of them. I could barely get the funding signed off on one of them. I really just wasn't churning enough cash to get the finance signed off. So I missed out on the LFA. And the figure back then was sub 400 grand now these things have gone through a stratospheric rise akin to really the cgt i would have done really well to get into one of those which couldn't do it i should have done it since but i haven't today is the day where i finally it's just over my shoulder there today is the day where i finally come face to face with one and go for a little spin in one it's a car that you guys and girls have told me sounds better than my crow gt and some of you have even said i should have bought it instead and I know there's still gonna be some that say that, so we're gonna jump into that, but I just wanna show you around here first, very quickly, and then we'll go for a spin. And I'm even gonna be doing some POV stuff in the LFA. Point of view driving behind the wheel, so we'll see how that goes. Let's go. She's here, we're gonna to get to that. Wrist check today, we have this, which actually featured the other day on my Watchdog series, which is now back, is a Romain Gautier Continuum 2. There was a full video on this watch on my Watch Talk playlist on the channel. Go and check that out if you are a watch person. Right then, here we go. We got some got some notices here. 6.5 LT. Scud has just come into stock. If you want a Scud, there is one there. It's just come in. I do want to talk about 
this very quickly. We touched on the 997 thing many, many times, and they've actually, I think they've sold four 997 GT3 RSs recently. So these things are absolutely flying, not just the four liters, but the 3.8, like mine as well, which is fantastic news. Um, but they are going off market before they even hit the internet, particularly the 3.8 at the moment. People can't get enough of those. Did tell you that was gonna happen. So 911R here as well, lovely spec. I think that has just come in. I think it's gonna be up in the late 300s, obviously less than a thousand of those. You can guess the number of how many there are of them. We're gonna get onto this spicy stuff though. We've got Valkyrie, F50, Koenigsegg, Casual. A lot of these cars actually feature on my last video here. We've got a seal gray Carrera GT here as well. I think that's just gone up for sale. Very rare color, that seal gray with the all important tan interior. Very nice, I believe that's Ascot or Terracotta. I always get confused. I mean, I should know, I've got one, but always confuses me. We've got another four liter there. I do want to take you over here. Slight change in pace. On the 997 theme, they've got this 997 turbo here. Only 8,000 miles, manual, right-hand drive. I believe in basalt black. You've got that metallic fleck there. Manual gearbox, exactly the same interior actually as my 997. And being the Gen 1, it's got a Metzger engine. No privacy glass. Look at that through there. This is absolutely stonking. There isn't, I don't think, a cleaner 997 turbo in the country. Very, very, very cool. If you're after a 997 turbo, which you should be because I think they're very, very good news, manual Metzger turbocharged engines, the last of which the Porsche made, get in the pot. Also want to show you this. This is a very, very rare car. Those BMW geeks out there will know what this is. This is effectively the five-door version of the M3 GTS. It's got the 4.4 litre engine from the M3 GTS. Only 67 of these are ever made worldwide. And it's based, it's called the CRT, which means carbon racing technology. And basically the panels are carbon. I'm not going to do that too hard because it's actually a hell of a lot of money. And the doors are made from carbon. So they're super, super light. I don't know why I'm doing that. You can't feel how light they are, but they are very light. You're gonna have to take my word for it. There's carbon bits all over it, like extra bits of carbon. You've got those lovely split style wheels. But you do have in there bucket seats, Alcantara everywhere. Carbon backed, and then in the back as well, you've got racing seats for the rear passengers as well. Super, super cool piece of kit. 160 grand for that. If you're a BMW guy, that really is the nuts. I mean, if you're a car guy, to be fair, in general, wicked, wicked car, but that's just come in as well. 160 grand, left-hand drive. And I do love the five-door E90 generation M3s. I think they're brilliant and they're super rare as well, but obviously only 67 of those in the world. Totally wild. We've got an E92 up here as well, which brings me actually on to talk about mine. I'm gonna get my E93 back out very shortly. I've got some mods planned for it and general uh, love and care. And then it's actually going to get put on my driveway and I'm gonna start using it regularly again. It's been neglected for about three years now. I haven't driven it. It's just been sat on its C-Tech charger. This is obviously E92, but mine's an E93 convertible. I think that's like a frozen edition or competition pack or something. Very, very nice. This is the Millennium Heroes brand that these guys have under this roof. And um, it does a lot of your kind of hero cars from this sort of era. And then you've also got fast classics, which will do, well, as the name suggests, classics that are fast like that. Lots of lots and lots of iconic hero cars that you kind of grew up wanting. Great, great, great place. Absolute toy shop here. It's amazing. Anyway, let's get, ooh, final thing then. Final thing then, just before I go, we've got a turbo here, turbo cab with, Auto, bit of a cruiser, but it's got ceramics. Very nice, very nice indeed. And that is with Millennium Heroes as well. There's loads of other stuff, don't shout at me, but we're gonna go and check out the LFA. Here we go then, LFA time. So this car was actually produced between the years of 2010 and 2012. There are only 500 of these ever made. It's actually the second in the F mark brand or sub-brand of Lexus they ever made. They started with the ISF, but this was the first ground up, standalone F model that Lexus made. It's really, really special in so many ways. They actually started developing this car 
in the early 2000s and culminated a decade later, as I say, when they actually started putting these cars out on the road. The last variants of these were the Nürburgring edition, but this is not the Nürburgring edition. This is actually a very rare right-hand drive car. So this production version of the LFA features a 553 brake horsepower V10 engine developed in collaboration with Yamaha, exclusive to this car, never found in any other car, and a body made from carbon reinforced polymer. That carbon reinforced polymer accounts for 65% of the LFA's body composition by mass. The LFA went into production in late 2010 and a circuit tune variant debuted in 2012. It was one of the most expensive Japanese road cars ever built. Production of the LFA ended in December 2012, as I say, with 500 cars produced. And in February 2016, crucial to the values of these things, the then European boss of Lexus confirmed that there would be no replacement to this car in the near future. They basically just said, that's it, that's your lot, get an LFA or forget it. So it's truly, truly special. It's got a carbon tub, much like the CGT, which it kind of gets compared to quite a lot with the whole V10 and analog kind of thing going on. Sort of the same era as well. And actually F1 technology was deployed from Toyota's Formula One team at the time reportedly as well. So links to F1, carbon tub, V10 NA engine. There are lots of similarities with the Crow GT, but that's pretty much where it stops. The LFA features an automatic gearbox, single clutch, whereas obviously the CGT has a manual box. It is said that these things sound better in the cabin than a CGT. So I think there's only one way to find out whether or not that is true, whether it indeed does sound better, and one of those on the road, and that is to take it outside. Here she is outside then, ready to roll. Interior wise, it does stand up well, even by today's standards. You think this is what, 14, probably 15 years old by the time they actually designed this? Does stack up very well. The only giveaway is that screen in the middle there. Kind of almost Game Boy pixels. But even this here, that could be out of a brand new car. You've got carbon around the wheel there. You've got your paddles. All your main controls are there, and you've got these very soft looking, cosseting bucket seats. You've got a little kind of nod to the carbon tub here with this big sill that you have to hop over to get in. You've got carbon on the door skins there, and these very mechanical looking door handles. You've also got seat belts that look more like race harnesses than anything. A mixture between a race harness and a seat belt. This one's only done 7,000 kilometers, so as you can see, the seats are in fantastic condition also got your seat adjustment there as well very nice place to be stitching's very good and a lot of kind of jdm if you will stuff actually lets itself down on the interior but i'm very surprised by this lfa how nice everything is done and around this side as well you've got carbon inlay there i don't know if you can see that and carbon skin there and even so the door shuts here carbon as well very very nice and we've got the build number in the middle there as well between the two seats. We've got Fraser driving first and foremost. Fraser's back on the channel. You would not leave me alone about Fraser oh, cool. being on the channel. I know you love being on YouTube, don't oh, you? Love it. I know. You tried to set the day off when you knew I was coming. Yeah. I got you, I turned up randomly. <laughs> Let's go. So one thing is done, Fraser's just pointed out before we get going. You can see that on the screen there, it says five cylinders idling. Obviously it's got 10 cylinders and it does that for economy. Very, very clever car. 2010 and it's doing clever things like that. Very good. See, the no this is why you're here, knowledge like that. Yeah, yeah. I would have just thought it was broken, but there we go. <laughs> Perfect, here we go then. There you go, the YouTube Ready? clap. Uh, these seat belts actually apparently have airbags in as well. We're learning all the time. Well, I'm learning all the time. Hopefully you're learning. Most of you will probably know this stuff already. Hopefully we don't need them. Yeah, I mean, no comment. Ready to put your hands in their life for a 21 year old? 21 year old in an LFA, that's a good title. Might, go, might go with that. You're, actually, you're gonna let me loosen this at some point. Yeah but you're probably gonna get more out of it than me. We all know I drive like a grandma on this channel. First time in an LFA. Really? Genuinely. Have you driven this before? Yeah. Uh, as you do. Is there anything you haven't driven that you really want to drive? F40. You've never driven an F40? No. Well, I've got you there. I've driven one of those. Yeah, well it's a kit car anyway, isn't it? So. 
Yeah, I did just say the F40 drove like a kit car in yeah. the office. Yeah. I must admit, I and I don't. I have, we need to watch what I say here. Oh. Yeah, no, we don't need to do that again. Okay, we don't even need to sync up because there's only one camera. Oh. Drop the ball on this on this video. I've, I've got my POV thing here. You like this, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we can even do it like that. <laughs> Sick. There you go. What, st what store do you buy this from? Oh, I don't know, like Alibaba or something. And then you go, you go like that. The glamour. That's how it's done, <laughs> ladies and gents. <laughs> Actually, Look at that, they love it. They're letting us out, they're wondering who like who the Dalek is on the passenger seat. I'm actually filming like that, chaos. Can <laughs> <laughs> you hear me? Oh god. <laughs> Imagine if you looked in here and you saw literally a child behind the wheel and then um I was gonna say with this on his head but I'm not. I have to bleep that. Thanks man. Right, can you guess where the uh, button is to raise the wing? No, I can't. Where is it? Just just try and guess even a vicinity. Well, logic would dictate it's somewhere here no. or there. No. Where is it? If you go behind your left shoulder, behind the seat. Well, I can't move like that. Yeah. I'm, I'm too old. I'm... Yeah. <laughs> So we've got to be a little bit careful. Oh my god. You bug. You absolute bug. Right, I don't know if that last bit was recorded. <laughs> and they're good. Literally, it's literally an iPhone. Please don't tell me you're using this angle. I'm quite, I don't know, we'll see. I'm doing the edits, so I'll we'll find out. <laughs> Listen to those dial shifts. It's so good. And it's a single clutch box, right? Yeah, so you've got to get used to driving it. Does he drive anything like an Aventador's gearbox? Yes. It's, it's more, I'd say it's more similar to like a early Ferrari, like a Challenge Stradale or something like that. Okay, nice. And is there like a technique to it? You can do it smoothly. I know like with the Aventador, you kind of like letting off a little bit is, is like a good idea. Yeah, exactly, yeah. The, auto, the automatic in this is pretty bad. So you just drive it in manual all the time? Yeah. Um, I also drive it in sport. Yeah, yeah, go on. Do all that stuff again. <laughs> Head cam. Well, you got wet mode as well. Key yeah. goods. Obviously, it's rear wheel drive. Yeah. Um, having driven the Crow GT then and this numerous times on both counts, how would you say they both compare? Go on. <laughs> you know, to be honest, they don't, they don't compare. The, you know, the fact that there's a V10 in there, a V10 is the only really? part of it, yeah. You know, this this wasn't brought for a racetrack. You know, they made the yeah. Nürburgring edition, which they made, I think, 64 of. Yeah. And then all the rest of the 500 just normal stock cars like this. But, you know, the, all this is, is a sort of a, a grand touring sort of autobahn crasher, basically. Yeah. And it's made for the noise. You know, the, the detail that Yamaha went to. Yeah. You know, they spent more time thinking of the noise of this than like, Fender did on guitars. <laughs> like, it's, it's ridiculous. Ooh. It's good. I, I think it does sound marginally better in the cabin than the Carrera GT does. Yeah, totally. And I hate saying that. Yeah. The Carrera GT is the love of my life. The Carrera GT needs an exhaust. If you put an yeah. exhaust on one of these, yeah. it's criminal. That's true. So, Boring stuff then. Servicing, what's that like on one of these? Pretty simple. Uh, we suggest on these sort of every two years. Um, Lexus don't really suggest anything because it's Lexus. They um, just leave you to it? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Uh, we, we tend to service ours every two years. Um, I'd say you'd budget a grand, but... A grand? Yeah, it's, it's really not expensive. The only thing that is expensive is if you want... It to, so they have two keys with these. Right? Yeah. They've got a carbon fiber key. 
Yeah. If you lose that, it's like seven grand for a new key. Really? The spare key, which looks like a Nissan Navara key, yeah. right? that's three grand. So the only thing you don't want to do is lose a key. Bar that, it's pretty plain sailing. Top consumer advice there, don't yeah, lose yeah. your LFA key. Yeah. Thousands, really. There's not yeah. anyone on like Alibaba that can just bodge one together. Maybe the people that made that head to head the rest of <laughs> This is top quality stuff. I can't believe I've still got it on actually. It, needs to, <laughs> it does need to come off. I don't even know it's been recording. It's like this as well, see this? What's going on in there? Well, it moves. It's digital, but it's mechanical. Oh, what? Yeah, so they made 230 odd lefties. So they actually made more lefties, even though it was designed to be a righty. Oh. So that makes this really rare then. Yeah, and then black was actually the most common colour. However, pretty much all of them went to Japan. So oh, to find one over here is pretty, yeah. And this particular car then, was it a UK car? Where, where did it start life? What's the, no, what's the story on this one? So this one was a one owner, Japanese, uh, basically, collector. Wow. Um, I think he had a couple of them actually. I don't know any Japanese mates. I don't know any mates. <laughs> That'd be a good start. I don't know any Japanese ones. If you're Japanese and you want to be my mate, let me know. In the comments. <laughs> that was a bit creepy, didn't it? <laughs> Find me in LFA, someone, Japan. 
right, for some reason, Fraser's actually let me drive, which is wild. Um, the quality in this thing, we were just saying, is absolutely incredible. What were these new, 350? 350 grand. What would you get for 350 these days? New. 296. Which is a good car, but it feels like a third of the car compared to yeah. this. And if that, that dashboard's cooler. That dashboard's sick, it's kind of like mechanical and digital all in one. Mm -hmm. Right, okay, to go then, Paddle. put on brake, paddle yeah. up, yeah. that's it. And we got parking brake, where's that? Like, in my ear? Under, under the, I mean. <laughs> Ergonomics was an afterthought, wasn't it? Keeps you guessing. No one can hit your car, because then. What's that, bollard? Yeah. Or bollard? Yeah. <laughs> good.
stressful. I don't feel you can absolutely pace them. Yeah. You, I mean, you can't really absolutely pace this. No. But I do find them very nervous, particularly the F12. I mean, yeah. TDF as well. Terrifying car. I find this quite manageable. Yeah, this feels a lot more manageable and a lot less nervous. Like it feels less darty. Look, I can wiggle the wheel, and we're not we're not in a ditch. We did that in an F12? It would. I mean, you'd be everywhere. But this is very livable with. Dare I say, you could daily this. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, you need if the euros a few zeros coming. to your name. Yeah. <laughs> I need to have about five more zeros to my name, bringing it out to a total of you, six. You could use this like if you want a Turbress or a Jaguar yeah. F-Type AMG GTC, something like that. Be the same. That's absolutely nuts. And the normal public don't have a clue what it is. No, they don't. This is an if you know, you know, but if you don't, just get on with your day and don't yeah. bother me. Everyone back, like, people just bat an alley that in. That is now that then, you can see it is dark. I've got back to Octane, started uh, chewing the cud with everyone, and then I realized I needed to actually end the video. Make sure you click the link in my description and in the pinned comment to go and get your lovely 70 my dash cam it supports me it supports the channel it means that i can continue to pay my bills buy stupid cars and also eat thank you very much for watching and a huge thank you to octane collection they're absolute superstars they're true gents and they've got some amazing stuff coming this year events and bits they're going to be out so make sure you're following them across social media for now ciao Roll up